PW here with the event guide for War Dragons. All right, so today we are going to be going over the Team Gauntlet. I think that this event is misunderstood by many, and if you're new to this event, then this video will be just for you. So first we're going to be going through the basic rules and how to get around within it, and then I'm going to kind of go over some tips and some tricks that's going to help you and your team score big in this event. Now, one of the big misconceptions in this event is that you don't have to do the PvP in order to get great points for your team, but that is not the case. So let's go in and show you what it looks like. So if we click on this island here, you're going to see that it's going to open up all these small islands. Now, the smallest one on the top left is where you will first begin your journey. Now, as you go into larger and larger islands, the amount of points you can earn will increase, but it will also be more challenging bases but there will not be defenders because these bases within these islands will not be on other teams but instead they'll be Gustav's I think is how it's pronounced they will be his islands which is a computer based island now let's look at the rules real quick now the first part they're just explaining to you how you can earn prizes number one you can earn prizes within your own point system and then there's a way to earn prizes if you're in the top thousand um, under your own rank globally and then of course your team rank within your league so that is one way but let's kind of go over how exactly you can earn your points now each island is going to have a lot of health which means you're going to have to attack with your team in order to take its health down and liberate that island once you have done an attack each attack is going to be worth so much and you can actually use things like mega attacks um, super attacks and even inner fires to increase the amount of points you make on a single attack. We'll go over that a little bit more in a little bit. Now, each attack will use your energy, which will regenerate over time. So you don't have to utilize your energy packs throughout the game, but make sure you check back regularly because it will be regenerated. I think it'll get a full regeneration within four hours because it's every 15 minutes you'll gain one energy. So really quickly, before we go over energies and inner fires and all those little things, let's talk about these islands. Now, these islands that you currently see are the ones that you're going to grow up on. These are the ones that as you unlock another island and work your way up through, you're going to get stronger and stronger bases, which means higher and higher points. But I believe, like I said, the little island is like a level 25. And once you get to the largest, it's like 70 or 80. So it's not really challenging for most of the members, but let's say you're level 40, you may need backup if you went up against one of the larger ones. So let's go ahead and go over to prizes and ranks really quick. If we click on points achievements, you're gonna notice that you need 70 points in order to get your first amount of sigils, and then 100, 300, and so forth. So as you grow and progress within this event, you will get more and more points, which will give you more and more prizes. This is why it's super important to make sure you come back every time you regenerate your energy so you can get more attacks in. Now, there is a big um, thing where you can make things faster with mega coins and super attacks, but you're actually going to be missing out on some of your points, believe it or not. And that is something we will go over once we get to the tips and tricks. So now the best thing to do is to set yourself a goal a realistic goal like I wish I could set myself a goal at 82,000 but let's be realistic the great thing to do is go through and decide what your goal is with your team for example to get the 300 sigil marker would be great so I would push for a goal like that now as for this last one it really sucks they've downgraded it to only a thousand sigils but you're gonna have to be on a high level team in order to probably get something of that nature now as for team rankings let's kind of go over next how you can get your team to the top of this ranking because of misconceptions this tends to be a challenge for most teams okay so the first thing you need to know is yes you can gain points for your team's rank by attacking these islands because your total points each person will be added into the pool for towards your team rank but the pvp island is what's going to help you really get there and a lot of players tend to ignore this island because they don't understand the importance of it so the island that's going to pop up in this empty water space here is going to have a timer there when the island isn't there 
to let you know when your next PvP will be. Now the players or the team that they choose for you to go against will be super random. Now you will notice though eventually that you're going up against the same teams over and over and that is because you are probably up there on VP points and so are they and you're battling back and forth with somebody who has larger amounts of VP points. Now in this situation the VP points are very important because every time you liberate that island or you win against the other team you are going to actually get a victory point bonus for your team which will go into your total team point achievement. Now let's say that the other team has taken the island before you did and they're still an hour's time on the clock. That does not mean give up because they won. You can still gain victory points for your team if you finish that island before that clock runs out. So make sure that you make that an importance because you can still get a percentage of bonus of points for clearing that island out within a certain amount of time. Now that does not mean that you're gonna get the big amounts because if they took the base first, or I should say the island first, of course they're going to be worth more. Now one of the big arguments within these PVPs is should you defend or should you not defend? So that's something I wanna go over with everyone really quick because it can cause some very sour conversations within league chat. I think the biggest PvP event argument out there is should you defend your team's bases during the PvP? And realistically guys, I think it depends on how you view it. Um, one side of the spectrum views it as the only person winning in the situation is PG. And then on the other side of the spectrum they say, hmm, yeah I get that, but my team is trying to take first place and if we don't defend against you then we're not going to take first place and there are that percentage of people that will claim that they don't believe in defending bases but that's their way of preventing you from defending yours so that they can sneak up on you and take large amounts of points so I would talk to your leadership and find out what they prefer and if they don't like you defending on PVPs then be sure not to if they believe in defending hard then go for it if they don't care either way then the choice is up to you now I have personally attacked bases where people defend left and right and that's why I suggest you usually attack a little below what you're usually able to do um, there's nothing like losing a big part of your points because of it now that does not mean if you lose you're not going to get anything you will still get a percentage and as long as you defeat the base and get 70%, you'll get your normal amount. Now, depending on the event, you can also get bonus points for making 100% finish on it. Now, I personally fall in the spectrum of, I get both sides. I understand what you mean by PG wins, etc. But at the same time, I understand why teams do it so they can stay on top. So I'm one of those, I really don't care. I suggest everybody attacks lower than their level. And that will probably get me a big thumbs down, but I don't care. That is my opinion and that is the truth. If you don't like playing a game because people are gonna defend against you, then why are you playing this game? If it wasn't something we were supposed to do, then it would not be a feature within this event. So for me, I don't care either way. I generally don't defend, but I don't care if I get defended against or if one of my teammates defend one of our bases. I just, I really don't care either way. So let's get on to the next subject. Now, when it comes to your attacks, you're going to have three choices. You're going to be able to do a basic energy attack, a super attack, and a mega attack. Now, each of these are going to give you so many points, but a lot of people don't realize that basic energy, even though it's basic, it is actually going to get you far more points in the beginning. Unlike Flash here, it can be a very super slow process, however. So let's kind of go over the ins and the outs, the negatives and positives of using each of these attacks because they all, believe it or not, have their negatives. For example, basic energy in the end will give you the most amount of points and I can show you how, but at the same time, you're going to be utilizing a lot more heal potions and a lot of other things as well. So you're going to be using up a lot more of your resources in the end on that versus your mega attack. Now let's say you find a base that's worth 100 points. And to get this 100 points, you have to do a basic attack. But it gives you the option of earning a whopping 400 points 
to do a mega attack. Now the big difference between these two is going to be your mega attack is going to cost you 20 energy and the other one's only going to cost you four. And if we divide those, that means you're doing basically five attacks in one round, which is going to give you 500 points if you would do those five attacks in total. So by doing your mega attack or your super attack, I'm sorry, by doing your super attack, you're actually losing out on a total of 100 points. So in a way, and in essence, you're actually earning less points by doing that super attack in total. Now let's say you've only got one dragon worth attacking this base and he still can't even take it out completely. So every time you attack this base, you're gonna have to utilize heal potions in order to continue getting your points. So in an essence, you could end up using between four and 12 heal potions just to get these 500 points. So realistically, the mega attack, I'm sorry, the super attack, yes, gives you 100 points less, but how much of the heal potions would you have to utilize, and food, I must add, in order to defeat that base? So that's something else you need to think about when it comes to, is it worth it to do your mega or your super attacks? Because in the end, it does save you on heal potions and on time. But that's up to you. If you have loads and loads of heal potions and you don't have a lot of energies out there, then you might want to do basic energy attacks, like singular. But if you don't have very many heal potions and you've got all of this energy and inner fires out there, then it, you might want to utilize the super attack. Now, another reason why people use super and mega attacks is to help boost and make it go quicker. So like when you're doing your PVP island, mega coins are really great to help get that island down as quickly as possible for those VP points. Now tomorrow I will be actually pulling out two videos. One will be my new Friday review videos of a dragon or a rider, but I'm also gonna be doing a second um, event guide on this PVP, so be sure to check in on that. I, the problem is putting up my event guide today on a PVP, the PVP hasn't even started yet, technically, because we are in the chest hunting phase. If you don't know what that means, it means you need to be out attacking bases and hitting those monuments so that you can gather your chests so that you can get things like energy packs and inner fires. But the actual PVPs don't begin until tonight. So whenever I get some recording done between tonight's attacks and in the morning, I will put up a second video showing you a little bit more about the event as it is actually happening. So hopefully that helps you guys out even more but today should help you prepare for what's coming tonight. I'm so excited. All right, let's get this wrapped up. If you liked my video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. If you have comments or questions, be sure to put them in the video below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Click that bell for notifications. Happy hunting.